Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make some very special Easter eggs. What's special about these eggs is when you crack them open, there is cake inside. Let me show you how to make them. You're going to need some eggs, of course. Start off with nine large eggs. I'm actually using extra large eggs. Take the egg and on the large side of the egg, of the bigger end, poke a hole into the end of the egg. I'm using um, a metal skewer. You need something sharp. And then just widen the hole until you get a hole that is approximately half an inch in diameter, maybe even a little less, and you'll see later what I mean by that. And then just shake the egg until all the contents come out, and then rinse it under some cold water to make sure that you get all of the residue out from inside the egg. Now I've decided to dye these some Easter colors. And that's just plain old food dye. You can use the Easter egg dyeing kits as well. Now for the leftover egg bits, one of them you're going to put aside for the recipe and the other ones that you're going to cover and refrigerate and use in other recipes or for breakfast. Then take the colored empty eggshells and place them on some paper toweling to let them dry completely. Now for the cake part, this is what you're going to need. Quarter teaspoon of baking powder, eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, and a pinch of salt and add that to half a cup of all-purpose flour and stir that up until combined. In another bowl, place half a cup of sugar, one quarter cup of butter at room temperature. Blend that together until light and fluffy. Add that reserved egg, blend together. And then add some flavoring. I'm adding a half a teaspoon of lemon extract, but you can use vanilla extract or any other flavor that you'd like. Now add the dry ingredients. I added the flour in a little bit at a time until it was all combined. And then add one quarter cup of sour cream. And the sour cream you can't really taste in the final result. However, it does help make the cake nice and moist. And just stir that in with a spoon until it's well combined. Now divide the batter up into however number of colors you want to make. You don't have to dye the batter, you can just use it white just the way it is. I'm using some of those neon food colors I used in the cupcake popper uh, video I had made before. So just stirring the color into the batter. And then I'm going to place the batter into some piping bags. I actually bought these piping bags um, on eBay for a really good price, so shop around for these if you can't get them locally. And so placing the batter in the piping bag and just cutting a little hole in the end. I am not um, uh, putting a tip on these. I'm just using them plain. Now to make sure the cake doesn't stick to the eggshell when it's baking, I'm spraying a little bit of cooking spray into the egg, making sure the entire surface on the inside is covered. You could even pour in a little bit of vegetable oil and just swirl it around until the interior is covered and then simply place it on some paper toweling to let any excess drip out. To bake the eggs, you're going to place them in a little nest of aluminum foil in a muffin tin. The aluminum foil will keep the egg upright during the baking process. Then simply fill the eggs to about three quarters full. And I'm placing a little bit of each color in each egg and the trick is, uh, I guess through trial and error, to decide of how full to make these. Um, mine overflowed, which apparently does happen according to the website where I found this, and you'll find that link in the description box, of course. I put a little bit of color in, in each, and I filled them to what looked to me to be about three quarters full, but probably was a little bit more than that. There they are, baked 350 degrees for 23 minutes. And when you insert a toothpick in the center, it'll come out clean. And you can see they did overflow, but that's not a huge problem. And I'll show you what to do if this happens to you, which it probably will. Once they've cooled down a bit, you're going to take each egg, take it out of the aluminum foil, and then just pick off um, the larger pieces of cake. Yes, I'm eating them. It was quite good. And for the rest of it that stuck to the egg, just take a, um, a butter knife, in this case I'm just using a steak knife, and just scrape off the excess cake. It comes off fairly easily. And then using a damp cloth, 
just wipe it down to get rid of any crumbs that are left. And there's the finished egg. There is a hole in the bottom, but when you stand these up, you won't see them, and I'll show you that later. And to reveal them, you just crack it like you would a hard-boiled egg, and then just peel off the shell. I was quite impressed that the shell actually comes off quite easily and doesn't really stick that much to the cake. And each one will be different, of course, so it's kind of like a little surprise each time. There you can see all the colors. And it really does look like an Easter egg when it comes out of the shell as well. Now to show you the inside, I'm going to slice the egg in half. I'm going to go lengthways, and I'll show you one later in the photos where I cut it crossways. And there they are. As you can see, when they're placed in a little basket, you can't really see the hole in the bottom of them. I was really impressed with the way these turned out. Very happy with them. I think this would make a nice addition to an Easter basket instead of the traditional ones. So why don't you give them a try? There's one with that's been cut in half. You can see it looks like a yolk in the middle.